the time to come here. Um, normally I sit there and I'm calling in speakers, so it's quite unusual for you to be in the, 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 in the spotlight. Um, this piece of research uh, is based on desktop review, um, obviously, uh, and some limited interviews. It is not as a consequence um, as thorough as one would want, and it was also not and did not look at the benchmarking in other jurisdictions, which if you were to do uh, a full piece of work, which I may well do, it would involve an extra layer of research. The report is available on the EPS website, um, for those of you who want to read it. Um, it's designed to facilitate a discussion on regulation. Um, and better regulation, which was very popular and very much to the fore up to about three to four years ago. And as I will argue, it's fallen off everyone's radar screen for varying reasons. Regulation is acutely important to any uh, state, uh, it's acutely important to the citizens of any state because it's one of the three formal levers of state power, taxation and expenditure being the other two. So we obviously spend a lot of time talking about taxation and expenditure, and as you will see, we spend probably a little bit less time talking about what is good and bad about regulation. Regulation covers the entire policy cycle, from initial ideas to scoping ideas right the way through to the evaluation of implemented policy. And the regulatory impact analysis comes in at the front end and also can inform policy revision at the tail end. There are 213 public bodies with regulatory power in Ireland. And bear that in mind when I start presenting because you can well ask yourselves how many of these are actually uh, DNA'd to do RIAs, which is the jargon for regulatory impact assessments. Um, the basic argument is that good regulation is based on robust and comparative evidence and is informed by stakeholder inputs. The corollary is bad regulation is based on hunch, uh, going through the motions and involves imposing a solution without consulting anyone. And there's a lot happens in between. You will be familiar, most of you, uh, with the, what's called the regulatory impact analysis, which is a system of vetting and approving uh, policy options that was approved by government and implemented with great, great, great gusto and good effect uh, to look at the likely impacts and effects, direct and indirect, of all legislation involving uh, statutory change. And also, it is responsible, RIAs, to looking at um, alternatives to regulation. So what it would typically do is to see whether a, a bill was justified or whether the same result could be achieved by perhaps not introducing legislation. The Cabinet guidelines in RIAs date from 2006. And just to recap, um, they require, as Cabinet guidelines have a certain effect, that all memos to government involving changes to the regulatory framework, including significant statutory instruments, and that's relevant, to the uh, implementation of EU directives, all of these must be subject to an RIA, and that all options in an RIA must be assessed, and all impacts must be assessed. These are Cabinet guidelines. The Cabinet also decided eight years ago that RIAs should be published and made available on departmental websites. So when I did my desktop survey, I checked the departmental websites searching for RIAs. It is also a requirement of government that a cost-benefit assessment be carried out when, quote, significant impacts result. So for every major proposed regulation, it is also a cabinet requirement that a CBA be carried out in addition to a regulatory impact assessment or analysis. And very interestingly, which I wasn't aware of up to recently until I did this research, which, by the way, concluded last January, is that an RIA is required within four weeks of the publication of every EU proposal and that these RIAs should be made available to the relevant Oireachtas committees. More about that and on. The RIA guidelines also apply to policy review, which might involve stopping short of it, the introduction of legislation. So the disciplines and the methodology of an RIA also applies to policy reviews. 
The government initially had two types of RIAs, a screening RIA, which was a sort of an executive summary RIA, and a full RIA, and in 2009 abolished the distinction. So there's only one type of RIA now. Um, there's no distinction between screening and full. <clears throat> the guidelines also say that the RIAs apply not just to policy departments, but to all government bodies and organisations, of which, as I said, they're in excess of 200. The RIAs do not apply to finance bills, to emergency legislation and to security and to some criminal uh, legislation, obviously. The key principles are fairly straightforward. They're set out in guidelines published by the Taoiseach's office in 2009. I'm not going to go through them all, but every single RIA should cover these principles. The fact of the matter is they don't. Um, with some exceptions. And I'm going to quote one exception, which is the current, only just published, uh, bill for on lobbying, which contains a very, very detailed RIA, one of the best I've seen. Uh, it asks a number of questions and responds. For example, as regards to the necessity test, it says, is the regulation necessary? Can we reduce red tape in this area? But bear this in mind that most RIAs don't answer these questions. It asks, as a relation, in relation to effectiveness, is the regulation properly targeted? Can it be complied? Can it be enforced? And proportionality, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? It's fairly basic, you know, questioning and querying. And because the lobbying bill was subject to so much detailed consultation, it was easy for the Department of Public Expenditure to respond uh, in this regard. On transparency, uh, have cons uh, stakeholders been uh, consulted prior to regulating? Is there good explanatory material? Who is responsible? For whom and for what? Is there an effective appeals procedure? Now, these are standard questions that apply to every piece of policy review and legislation. Are there anomalies and inconsistencies? Are we adopting best practice, etc.? So the principles have been implemented uh, in Ireland as an exception and I said the most recent one the lobbying bill was what, probably the only one that I could find of late that systematically addressed these four, these six principles in detail there also are stakeholder guidelines approved by government um, a lot was made of these uh, about six, seven years ago and effectively they say and they haven't been amended to my knowledge or abrogated that RIAs must be used as a basis for consultation uh, with wide stakeholder involvement and that the RIAs must be actively disseminated to stakeholders. So in other words, if the government is considering legislation before it actually takes a decision, it should publish its RIA to the wide stakeholder group, get feedback and that feedback should inform the draft legislation that's subsequently published. And ideally, which doesn't happen very often, the views of respondents would be commented upon. Whereas typically, up and recently, all that happens is the list of respondees would be listed, but their views would not be commented on on a one-to-one -one basis. Some general issues might be covered, but generally speaking, it has not been practiced in Ireland that the detailed views of individual respondees have been looked at. In contrast, in the European Commission, when you look at their RIAs, if a major interest group expresses a view, you will get a critique of the view and a conclusion as to whether and to what extent the views expressed are accepted or not accepted and what the rationale is. Also, the stakeholder consul consultation states that all affected parties should be consulted. <coughs> now, it has been practiced in Ireland that in some instances only those in a particular subsector are consulted. So in doing that, there is a danger that those outside the subsector don't get involved and don't hear about the RIA too much later. So what's best practice? Well, the OECD has adopted conclusions on smart regulation. Ireland signed up to these. Um, You'll see the details in the appendix to my report. We also, during our presidency, signed up to EU conclusions on smart regulation. Uh, we chaired the Competitiveness Council. Um, Richard Bruton signed this in May 2013. FORFOS have, are on record that, quote, high quality regulation is a critical tool for competitiveness. Um, the high level group on business regulation are also of that view. Another incident of best practice is the European Commission's impact assessments. 
What I do typically when I'm advising a client, I look at and they ask me to review, say, the water reform bill. I check, is there a similar impact assessment for a similar piece of legislation at European level? And typically the RIAs or the impact assessments at Brussels level are far, far, far more detailed and robust than their counterparts here in Ireland. Understandably, with 28 member states, and there are resource issues which I'll come to. Also, in several jurisdictions, and including and also in the European Commission, um, there are what are called independent regulatory policy committees, which is an independent group reporting typically to the Prime Minister's office, comprising of academics and policy people, who look at the quality of the RIAs and have the option of criticising or sending the RIAs back to be redrafted if they're not up to scratch. But this happens frequently in the European Commission, and there have been several instances where draft RIAs didn't actually pass muster and were sent back for, for addition. So the RIAs should be conducted before, and I quote the government's guidelines, before a preference for new rules crystallises. So it is strict government policy, supported by guidelines published and sent to the entire public sector, that RIAs should be prepared before legislation is published. I'll stand corrected on the statistics, bearing in mind this is desktop review, but there were 137 bills uh, enacted or uh, submitted between March 2011 and January 2014, and I could find uh, RIAs published uh, in only a a small fraction of them. 42% were the subject of an RIA. If the figure is a bit near 50%, it doesn't really matter. It just basically shows that the RIA guidelines are not being implemented across government departments. Related to this is the annual cost of regulation, which the EU reckons is around 3.5% of GDP on average across member states. If you take that figure for Ireland, it's 4.5 billion. The government target is to reduce the administrative burden on regulation by 25%. It's not happening. We'll talk about that in a minute, which would release a billion per year into the economy from SMEs and others who are trying to comply with legislation. A very significant burden in terms of the of compliance costs arise in about 5% of legislative requirements. So quite a lot of legislation is enacted that doesn't have dramatic uh, impacts on, on business. Not one RIA, and again I stand corrected, has been conducted in Ireland at the level of detail carried out by the European Commission. The impact assessments in Brussels typically run to two to three hundred pages. Uh, the best two that I have seen would be the Legal Services, Services Reform Bill RIA, the Companies Bill RIA, and the Lobbying Bill. They're all about 40, 50 pages. They are excellent, don't get me wrong, but they don't go into the level of detail that is typical of what happens in Brussels when a draft proposal has been initiated. There are some very good examples of RIAs, uh, and you know, the lobbying bill which I've cited, the legal services bill, uh, RIA, is a fascinating piece of research to justify legal services reform, but it was only published three quarters of the way to the committee stage of the bill. It was not published when the bill was published, it was not subject to public consultation in accordance with the government guidelines. And if it had been published and debated at the front end of the bill, I would imagine the Legal Services Bill would be enacted by now, because it made the case and makes the case for a thorough reform of the legal services profession. But as I said, it came into play and was only made available far too late in the procedures in the, in the, in the Oireachtas Committee. And as a consequence, some of the amendments at committee stage were blocked at committee level uh, and were deferred for six months, the, the idea of multidisciplinary practices. The Harbours Bill is a summary RIA, it is not a full RIA. So again, while it's a very good level of detail about the Harbours Bill, which is transferring Harbours to local authorities, the RIA is not at a level of detail that would be required under the Cabinet procedures. On the Climate Change and Low Carbon Development Bill, no RIA was carried out. On the other hand, the NESC did fantastic work on terms of the research but it didn't actually conduct, or nobody conducted an RIA. There was public consultation, and there was an Oireachtas Committee, but the Oireachtas Committee did not consider a regulatory impact assessment, and still hasn't. And there's no published RIA on that bill. Again, if there is one, I couldn't find it. The Companies Bill, again, is best practice. The Companies Bill was published, 
There were subsequent amendments and the Department of Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation has published an up-to-date and revised RIA based on feedback. And that's what you're supposed to do. So the RIA will change depending on feedback and obviously when new options are looked at. A good example is the Green Paper on Energy Policy. It complies in full with the, with the stakeholder consultation requirements and presumably in due course that there will be a, an RIA published on the Reformed Energy Bill. <coughs> Not best in class is the Water Services Bill, setting up Irish water. Um, I couldn't find an RIA for this bill. Uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers produced a fantastic report justifying the, uh, that the delivery of water should be through a public entity, uh, but did not conduct an RIA. And with the bill more or less gone through now, I couldn't find anywhere, again, I'll stand correct if somebody can produce it for me, an assessment as to the pros and cons, the effects and the administrative burden, costs and impacts on the entire community, including the business community, wasn't published. The Forestry Bill, a screening RIA, was published well after the Forestry Bill went into committee stage. There no more, the idea of a screening uh, RIA was abolished six years ago. And the bill quote says, there will be no impacts or significant costs imposed on the forest and forest product se sector. Uh, which is, uh, I've done some work for that sector, is absolute baloney because the latest series of amendments at committee stage are imposing, among other things, a fine of a half a million euros for breaches of certain parts of the Act or the, when it once is enacted. The Health Insurance Reform Bill is a private member's bill and doesn't have an RIA. Now, you sh could argue that the Oireachta should be providing support for private member's bills to initiate an RIA a regulatory impact assessment when private members are mindful to put legislation forward. The EU procurement directives, huge, huge impact, we spend nine billion a year on procurement, we should have been subject to an RIA. If they have, I don't know what it is. And the RIA would be re very relevant because there are significant impacts on business because business and SMEs are involved with procurement. Again, no RIA. Very recently, the NAM amendment bill was published, no RIA. The Social Welfare and Pensions Bill was published in the last two weeks. I couldn't find an RIA. And again, bearing in mind that the guidelines state that within four weeks of the publication of EU proposals, regulatory impact analysis should be prepared, I couldn't find one on the EU's 2030 goals for climate change and energy. That should have been published and sent to the relevant Oireachtas Committee. If it was, I couldn't find a record of it. A policy review would be the Better Energy Finance Policy Review. Again, great work going on. It should be subject to doing and producing an RIA. If it is doing so, I'd like to see it. I couldn't find it. Um, I've effectively talked about the administrative burden uh, on business. The bottom line is the government has agreed to reduce the administrative burden by 25%, but the department that's primarily responsible for this, the Department of Jobs, is doing the heavy lifting, uh, accounting for 72% of the total target. Um, you could argue that the target, which was 500 million initially, is way, way, way below what the actual administrative burden is. Uh, and I did some consultancy work in the department as well, north of that. So I love comparing what people promise with what they deliver. And this is the, what was promised in the programme for government. The column on the left states what's in the programme for government and the column on the right my, is my, are my, my views. Departments are required to carry out and publish RIAs before government decisions are taken. That's a restatement of the government guidelines. It isn't happening in the majority of cases. The cost of government-imposed red tape would be reduced. As, as far as I can see, only one department is actually making a significant effort. Regulatory enforcement agencies would be streamlined in fairness, the government has introduced its statement on economic regulation, but that concerns state companies and state regulators only. It's a good piece of work um, and it is in full compliance with the programme for government. Again, it says RIAs prepared, will be prepared in all EU directives and be sent to the relevant Oireachtas committees. I couldn't find one RIA sent to any Oireachtas committee when I was doing my searches. If they do exist, I'd love to hear from those of you who found them. So this effectively tells me that the cabinet procedures on RIAs are not being fully respected. I haven't found evidence of any major uh, policy reform that's the subject of a full cost-benefit assessment, including water reform, property tax, uh, legal services reform. You could, there's a list of 20 other major reforms underway.
I, I couldn't find RIAs on EU proposals, um, which, which is a requirement of the Cabinet. Um, against this, the Department of Public Expenditure Better Regulation Unit, as you know, has been scrapped and all the people who were in the unit that went from the Taoiseachs to Deeper have been reassigned. So we don't have a better regulation unit. The Department of Taoiseach Better Regulation Unit was best in class of its type when it existed. We got accolades across the OECD for a fantastic piece of work and the way we addressed better regulation up to the time of the recent government when everything, everything changed. The focus now is on economic regulation, which is quite different what the economic regulators are doing is assessing public sector impacts only, assessing value for money and looking at the impacts on the public sector, they're not looking at the impacts on the private sector. So while it's a good initiative, it is partly uh, achieving the public policy objectives. There are quality issues with some of the RIAs. I decided not to get into this in my work, but if you take a random sample of some RIAs, some are pretty dreadful. Um, the quality is very, very uneven. So my assessment is that the carrying out of regulatory impact assessment at government level is not a priority. It's fallen off the agenda. Now, the government has just initiated the Taoiseach's office a document called the Draft National Risk Assessment last April, and I've submitted this report because regulatory risk is an issue in Ireland. Um, and again, if we're not implementing the basic rules of regulation and what defines good regulation, we have a problem. So many policies are not based on robust evidence. Many policies are not informed by stakeholder inputs. Public policy guidelines happen, but it is rare to see a critique offered of the views expressed, and if so, it's never done in public. And options of alternatives to legislation really don't exist. The programme for government primarily looks at legislating for X, Y and Z, whereas not legislating or doing something on a voluntary or code of practice basis can actually achieve the same results. The administrative costs and burdens on business are not being systematically quantified, with some rare exceptions and some very good exceptions. And to quote the high-level group and business regulation, RIAs are actually not informing government decision, they're being introduced to justify government decision, and that is not what's supposed to happen. That is total no-no at OECD and at EU level. There have been positive statements made last September about Dáil reform, um, and to quote the Taoiseach, to bring civil society, interest groups and experts into the legislative field at an early stage in the context of Dáil reform. But a lot of what was promised is a totally at odds with the government regulations on public consultation and on RIAs. And these guidelines have not been changed to reflect Dáil reform. So you have a situation where an Oireachtas committee can be looking at legislation or draft legislation at the heads of a bill and it doesn't have an RIA in front of it and it will go out to consultation. It is not the policy maker, it's the legislator, whereas the departments who are supposed to be informing policy have handed over responsibility for a lot of the policy making process, not the leg legislation making process, to Oireachtas committees. And the, the approach is not uniform. For example, the Oireachtas committee, as we know <coughs> well in this house, did fantastic work on climate change, but they didn't, the, the Department of Environment chose to, the route of the Oireachtas committee to get consensus on climate change, whereas the Minister for Communications and Energy has chosen the route of a green paper to get consensus on energy policy, <coughs> which is the opposite side of climate change. So there's an inconsistent approach. So, strictly speaking, if the Oireachtas committee is to do its job, and we, it is doing good work, and some great examples of Oireachtas committee's own initiative reports, they should be based on RIAs. The high level group, there's a H missing there somewhere, the high level group and business regulation, this is their quote, and I think this is not me, this is their quote. So a lot of what I'm saying is supported by the evidence of the government group, which is uh, social partner representatives and major departments. And it says, quote, there is a patchy approach to the commissioning and quality of RIAs. Departments are not carrying out RIAs or producing them late in the stage in the policy and legislative process to justify decisions already taken. That's the view of the experts in government. This is a misapplication of the RIA process, which is meant to guide policy developments and not be a tool to justify <coughs> policy decisions. That's a pretty serious criticism. 
And some of the members of the group, including IBEC, have gone on record and have used even stronger language than that. Mm-hmm. This other quote is, the larger systemic problem appears to be the lack of centralised oversight, given that the Department of Teaching is no longer involved in RIAs, and the buy-in from deeper seems limited. Again, that's a slight understatement. <coughs> so, what can be done... Um, Again, bear in mind that we're post-Troika and for the last two to three years we have probably other priorities. We do need, I would think, a, a reintroduction of a smart regulation or better regulation uh, capacity in government. I, in most jurisdictions it, it is located in the Taoiseach's office or the Prime Minister's office. It is, it's in the Secretariat General of the Commission. So it is the agency that's responsible for policy coordination typically hosts a smart regulation unit. Um, It needs to be resourced. If we're going to take this agenda seriously, somebody should really, and it's not for me to do, look at putting pressure on government to consider the reintroduction of a smart regulation unit. The Cabinet guidelines on RIAs and indeed on, on public consultation must be updated. We've signed up to best practice within the OECD and at EU level only in the last 18 months but we haven't changed any of the guidelines which are now 8 years old to reflect what is best practice across Europe and the OECD. I would go as far as to say that some of the draft legislation which were, which, where there's very significant cost benefits or cost benefit impact requirements say the burden on businesses maybe 50 million euros a year, you would be required by law to carry out a CBA, a cost-benefit assessment. Uh, at the moment, its guidelines are voluntary, so it's not happening. But for major, major pieces of legislation that have significant impacts, I think it would really inform a good debate in the Iraq this and with stakeholders if they could see what the cost-benefits and what the uh, arguments are. The, the high-level group of business regulation doesn't have a mandate to drive this agenda. It is driving the agenda primarily on the administrative burden on business. And I think if they had resources, they should be looking at the smarter regulation agenda. The statement on economic regulation published uh, gave allocated responsibility for regulation across major departments, but dropped, effectively, leadership responsibility for better regulation. And there is an argument, if if this agenda has been taken seriously, and obviously only if it's been taken seriously, that some form of a small, I wouldn't call it fiscal council for regulation, but some capacity, independent capacity, be put in place so that very poor quality or inadequate RIAs or those where no RIAs are being undertaken, there would be a, 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 an appeal court that can view the quality and the, the, the necessity of RIAs to make sure they're fit for purpose. To conclude, here's a few quotes um, again to justify some of the recommendations this is from the high level group a regulatory environment which fosters growth and investment is essential to economic recovery and job creation if the regulatory environment is not working ergo we're not getting the same bang for our book we're not being as smart and we're not being as dynamic as we could be quote from IBEC an effective efficient and appropriate regulatory regime is a prerequisite to achieving the government's commitment to make Ireland the best small country in the world in which to do business so I beck on board. The Action Plan for Jobs actually says something about it. A smart approach to regulation, balances, costs, etc. So there's an awful lot of good intention that we must introduce smart regulation, but the harsh reality is it ain't happening. Uh, we have all the essentials in place. We have the tools in place. We were best in class and assessed as best in class by the OECD and the Commission in terms of what we were doing 45 years ago. But all of that best practice seems to be cast aside for other reasons. And I would argue, finally, that evidence-based research must be central to the DNA of good policy-making, not just in Ireland, but elsewhere. Thank you, Chairman.